What's up everybody, this is Adam with Reese Customs and today we're going to be machining some scales, aka handles, for some knives. Uh, these knives right here, these 10 neck knives, have all been cut, heat treated, and we are going to make the scales for them. And we're going to let that run on CNC while we are grinding the blades. So when we talk about machining, what we're going to use is a CNC, which is a computer numerical controlled device uh, that will, we will program something on the computer and tell it, this is how you cut this out. And then the machine moves a router around with a bit in it and cuts the material. The material we're going to be using today is micarta. And so what micarta is, is a phenolic resin. It is basically a canvas um, impregnated with a resin pressed it's impervious to chemicals, uh, moisture, temperature differences, things like that. This particular material comes from my buddies at Pops Knife Supply. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. They're just friends of mine, so I purchased all this. But uh, I do recommend them. They uh, great group of guys that run it. Uh, very fast shipping, and they got quality products and really good pricing. So shout out to Pops. Um, we've got some quick set epoxy. And we have our micarta here. Hold on, let me get it out of the box. And so these particular scales, we're only going to need one of each. But I bought one in case it messes up. So we have a green canvas micarta and a black micarta, canvas micarta. This is going to be like a liner. So what we're going to do, before we start machining, we're going to glue, epoxy these two pieces together. Then we're going to put it all on the machine, let the CNC take care of the rest. So first we have to prep these surfaces because as they are, the epoxy is not really going to stick, not really going to bond. So what we're going to do is we're going to sand it, then we're going to put the epoxy on it. So let's get to it. Okay, so we got our palm sander. We got an 80 grit Diablo disc on here. And all we're going to do is just go around and rough the surface up so that the glue sticks. That's it for that. Now, we'll clean them off real quick. Just rubbing alcohol. Just to get the dust and stuff, contaminants off the surface. All right. So we'll give this a second to dry, and then we'll mix up our epoxy. All right, now that that's dry, we're gonna take our two-part epoxy, and we're gonna mix it up just directly on this. A lot of people can use super glue. Uh, I used to use super glue. Well, I do still sometimes, but for this big of an area, I'm gonna use epoxy just to be safe. A and B. gets mixed we'll then spread it out like butter and toast well I wouldn't recommend eating it we gotta be relatively fast because this stuff this is five minutes so it starts setting up pretty quick Take our other piece, lay it right on top like that. Squish it in good. All right, so I've got my, these are my aluminum plates I quench with. Set them on it, make sure it's lined up good. And then, The original shake weight. I'm gonna set that on there. And we will 
let it sit. All right, we are back. I'm gonna take the weights off. I ended up putting this other piece on here too, just, just to be safe. Now we have, uh-oh, we're stuck. No big deal. So we got two pieces that are epoxy together. They're not going anywhere. So one thing we need to do before we can put this on the machine is infusion, I guessed about three eighths inch thick because it's going to be a, about three eighths thick total. Um, but we want the exact thickness. So before we put our tool paths out and all that, we're going to measure it to get an exact thickness of it. We're going to enter that in. Oh, hold on. So let's say it's 0 0.337. So I'm going to go into Fusion and change that real quick. All right, so while the tool paths are generating, I'm going to cover the whole bottom of this in this blue painter's tape, and you'll see why when we get over to the CNC. But basically, this is how we're going to hold down the work. And... It does a really good job of holding it down. We're gonna put tape here and tape on the bed of the CNC and then we're gonna super glue the tape together. So it's like double-sided tape. And then when you wanna peel it up, the tape peels off relatively easy, but it holds really good too. So I just like to cover the whole thing because we're cutting all the scales out. So if I just put a couple strips, then there's a chance the scale could be on a part that's not, not glued down. So just to be safe, tape's cheap, cheap insurance. So the bit we're gonna be using is this one. It's from a company called Tools Today. And it's uh, designed specifically for my car to carbon fiber, things like that. It's a 12 flute bit, eighth inch. This is gonna be the roughing initial pass. Now we're gonna take down the table one more row alright so when we lay the my card on here we, we don't want it off obviously the model's designed to have it start here and cut this way so this is going to be our XY origin point and so we want it relatively we want it square because the spindle is square to the table so I'm going to stick this under here so that's how we're going to glue it down just like that so take our super glue I'm just going to cover this thing give that a little bit before we start cutting.
Okay, so the CNC is done with its part. And you'll see it's easy just to pull everything off. But as you noticed in the time lapse video, I stopped it because when it started cutting the second stage, it started cutting way too deep. And that's my fault. And I'll talk about a little bit about why that happened. So when you initially set up the CNC, it's just a machine. It doesn't know where anything's at. So you have to tell it the bit is this far sticking out of the machine. So imagine my hand is the bottom of the router and this is the router bit, right? So then you zero it. I use a probe to zero it. And I zero it to, say this is the original thickness of what we're working with. So I zero it to here. So it says, all right, I know that my bit's here and the material starts here. So that's how it carves away. Well then, on the second stage, you have to replace the bit with another bit. So I wasn't thinking when I did it. And so now our material looks like this. So it's not as thick as it was before, right? But the programming is based off of this thick. So in Fusion, it says, all right, I know the material's this thick. I'm gonna do one pass to make it here, and I'm gonna do another pass to finish it off. Well, had I re-zeroed, like remember this is my machine and this is my bit, it's the big exaggeration, but let's say I re-zeroed it here and said this is the original stock height, then it would have known, all right, one pass has been made, I need to come down lower to make this pass. Well, what my machine did, when I zeroed it back out, I wasn't thinking at the time, I zeroed it to here. So it thought this was the top of the other surface. So it's thinking it's this high. And it knows to ignore the first pass and go down and start making contact on the second pass. Well, since it thought this was higher, it went a lot lower than it should have, if that makes sense. I, I could be just rambling on. But that's no problem, because we can cut all these out with a bandsaw and we'll be ready to use them. So not that big a deal, just a little extra work for us. But I'll, uh, adjust my methods of zero in a bit next time and we'll be good to go. It'd probably be best actually to uh, just pick like a corner and leave that full height. So just exempt like a corner of your stock so that you can re-zero off of that. So just a tip. Okay, so we got our 10 sets of scales cut out, cut loose from the big sheet. And you'll notice I didn't go all the way up to it because once they go on the knife and get glued up, we'll sand everything flush anyways. So there's no need to do that now. But there's two more things we need to do before we can put them on the knife. One thing is, you see how this is shiny here? The epoxy is not going to stick real good to this, so we've got to rough it up. But what we're going to do is we're going to use our flat block and we're going to rough it on there so we can also make sure that it's perfectly flat. The other thing we need to do is the fronts of the scales. We have to finish those completely because once it's on the knife, you can't get here to sand it and, and polish it out. So we've got to do that to all these, so we'll flatten them all first. Then we'll do all the fronts, polish them, and then they'll be ready to go. Then you'll have usable scales. Okay, this is our precision granite slab. 
Uh, it's certified to be flat, and then I have some uh, adhesive backed 80 grit sandpaper on here. I think it's 80 grit. It might be 100, but that'll work. So we'll just take these. Go in a figure eight pattern until the whole thing is uniform. So you see there's a little bit on this side, so that means this was dished a little bit. So we'll keep hitting it. And so this one's ready. It's ready to be polished on the front. So now we just got to do that uh, 19 more times and we'll be ready to go. Okay, there they are. All 20 of them, so that's 10 sets, are sanded. Now we have to finish the fronts of all of them. So we'll do that next. Okay, so to do the fronts, what I like to do is hold the sets of scales together so that I can finish both of them at the same time. That way, one doesn't accidentally get lower than the other one. So when you have a finished knife and you're looking at it head on, you don't see one side dipping down lower than the other. At this stage, it's unlikely to happen because we're just basically smoothing it out finer and finer to get it polished, but it's better to be safe. To do this, I'll start off with 220 grit, then 320, then 500, and then we'll buff it with the buffer. So let me just demonstrate that. Take a piece here. Hold them together. Basically just like that. You want to finish all the way up on this curve. So basically the whole rounded section you'll finish off. And uh, so I'll do that to these and then we'll get to the buffer. Alright, so we got the front sanded to 500. Now my wheels are already loaded with compound because I buff with them all the time. But basically we're going to hit it with this tight wheel, hit it with a loose wheel, and you'll see what it looks like. Alright. So now they're ready to go on a knife. we